Hey guys, this is Ash and you're watching Write a Gash. So today I am doing my July wrap up slash massive readathon 2021 wrap up. If you don't know why I'm doing a 2021 readathon right now, check out my TBR video in the cards. So the massive readathon is a readathon based on Sarah J. Mass's universe. Last year, they did the massive readathon based on the Akatar universe. And this year, they did it on the Throne of Glass universe. And I didn't know about this readathon last year. So to this year, after finishing the Throne of Glass readathon, I decided let's dive into the Akatar world again and try to complete all the prompts for my court and all of the place I'll visit. So I decided to go with the day court one because I think it fits me best. As much as I love Valaris, I think the day court encompasses me as a person. And the second reason is because I think I would thrive with Hillian as my high lord because he seems like a just ruler and he would be the kind of person who would piss me off the least. I am definitely, I think I would be the happiest in that court. So why not? like live in that court in my personal opinion um with that being said i want to jump into the books i read for this readathon and the books i read this month so i ended up reading like 26 books some of them really good some of them meh but let's talk about all of them so the first book i read was she persisted um the 13 american women uh, who changed the world it is by uh, Chelsea Clinton, and I did not read this book. The reason I didn't read this book is because it was a kid's book, and I don't feel comfortable reading them per se, because they're not written for me. But I did find the book to be interesting because it did follow some amazing women who have really impacted the world. And it was just at that point in like time where I needed something that was feel good, especially like pro women. And this book was it. Um, so I read it for two prompts. One was for day court and then the other uh, for my citizenship. And the other was for the library of the uh, day court. For the library prompt, I have basically to read a nonfiction with which this totally is. For the day court, I read it for the uh, read a book with diverse representation because this book does talk about American women from diverse background. It's got Harriet Tubman and so many other awesome women. The next book I read was Shadows and Death, which was for yet another prompt for my day court um, book. And this one I read for the prompt that was to read a book with an assassin. I gave this book a four out of five star. This book basically has a serial killer or an assassin really from Rourke's past and it's just Eve catches a murder and they have to solve it but they know who the murderer is because Rourke recognizes him and it's just like a oh, cat and mouse game to catch this guy okay so the next book I read wasn't for the massive readathon I was waiting for the next book for the massive readathon to be released. So I decided to continue reading the in Death series, which by the way, I got so into, and now I'm done with the series and I'm like, I'm lacking something in life. So I picked up the next book in the in Death series. I gave this book a five out of five. I loved it. It was basically set around a cult or it felt like cult in my opinion, a really sexist and racist cult. And it was, a really interesting read so I yeah I really enjoyed this one for sure and the next book I read was Honey and Spice and I read this one uh, for the last uh, day court prompt for my day court citizenship and it was to read a book that starts with the letter H I'm uh, betting that's for Helian and I gave this a three stars I did enjoy this book, but it was I just wasn't super into it. This book follows uh, two characters, one who does um, a radio show, I think, about just the like dating lives and helping women, etc. 
and the other is kind of a playboy and she does an episode on him and they be they have an anime to lovers arc i did not vibe with the plot if i'm being honest which is why i gave it a three stars the next book i read was the spanish love deception it was a reread i had initially planned on reading another book before i realized it didn't fit the enemies to lovers prompt and i didn't want to risk it and I just picked up a book I knew definitely fit both the prompts for The Night Court. So one, it, I read it for Illyrian Mountains, which was to read a book with the one bed trope. And then I read it for The Night Court, which was to read a book with enemies to lovers. And it was a pretty fun read. It's about these co-workers who are kind of enemies, at least from her point of view and she needs a date desperately for her sister's wedding in spain and he offers and a lot of things ensue the next book i read was dating dr bill which i read for the day court um so i read it for um a book with diverse representation for the day court prompt and then i also read it for the meet and greet day at the day court which was to read a book with healer and Dr. Dale is a cardiologist, a healer, and it's about Indian characters, so diverse representation. And I gave Dr. Dale five stars. I really love Nisha Sharma's writing style, so I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I am dying to read the next book in this series. Um, the next book I read was Pride, the story of Harry Milk and the Pride Flag, and I read this for the middle, which was to read a book with a symbol and the bright black flag is a pretty damn strong symbol. I am I was familiar with Harvey Milk's story, so I thought it would be really cute to read a children's book about him because I did incorporate a few children's books into my TBR this month. And I know that might be considered cheating, but technically last month when we did the um, massive readathon this year's version one of the books that we had to read for it that was like oh read this book prompt was where's waldo which i feel like is less of a read than these so i'm totally counting them and they're in good good reads that's always a good way to tell if it counts or not the next book i read was tokyo dreaming which i read um for the winter court prompts the first being the place i visited Cal calais's palace for which I had to uh, read a book while drinking a wintry beverage. I had some tea and coffee while drinking it because it's the middle of the summer right now. So I wasn't going to be drinking like hot cocoa. I'm also at home, so I don't have access to as much stuff, but I definitely drink tea and coffee in the winter. And then for winter court, I had to read a book with royalty. And this one follows a American Japanese princess. So why the frick not? And I, whilst I loved Tokyo Ever After, I really struggled with this book. Um, so this one is set in the aftermath of Tokyo Ever After. So while Tokyo Ever After was the story of Izumi fitting into the Japanese culture and fitting into the royal life, this one takes, look at, takes a look at what happened after. Uh, and Izumi's parents are back together and they're facing quite a lot of backlash from everyone because her mother is older, which by the way is the same age as her dad, but that's not an issue because she's the woman and she can't have children. BS in my opinion. I'm hmm. Anyway, so that. And Izumi's also facing pressure to figure out what she wants to do with her life if she wants to go to college or whatnot. So while the plot sounded super interesting, certain things about this book, which would be spoilers if I talked about, would definitely felt like a damper, dampener to how I felt about this book, which is why I gave it a three stars. The next book I read was The Float Plan, and I read this for the Summer Court. I read it for Adriata Grand Tour and for the Summer Court prompt. For the Summer Court, I decided to use the prompt to read a book with a colorful cover. It's got so, it's got such a pretty cover. It's got yellows, whites, blues, and it's beautiful. And for the Adriata Grand Tour, it, I had to read a sea-themed book, which it's set on sea for most of this book. It's about this girl who's um, boyfriend slash fiance dies and she 
is dealing with that pain and she decides to take their boat that on a trip that they were gonna go on together and on the way she realizes she can't do it, do it alone so she hires someone and he joins her on this trip across the world and she finds herself and discovers so much about life and everything really and i gave this book a four star i really loved the self-discovery storyline in this book the next book i read was built to last and i read that for the autumn courts for the farmlands of autumn and for the autumn court prompt for the autumn court i read it for the um a book that makes you feel cozy it is a contemporary and contemporaries usually make me feel super cozy especially when they're second chance romances and this book is a second chance romance for the farmlands of autumn i had to read a book with romantic tension so this book has a really interesting plot so these two were child actors who retired and now 10 years later they're stuck doing a tv show together a tv show produced by her ex-boyfriend and both of their ex-co-worker who is like the lead in the ch uh, tv show they did as children and it is a really really interesting book and my favorite thing about it was communication the characters actually talk to each other like they're friends which they are because they've been friends for years yes they haven't seen each other in like five years when this book begins but they were friends they treat each other with respect and that is such a rarity i feel like in books because you don't get communication as often um i gave this book a four star and i really loved it it was an arc i read and i highly recommend it and i think it is officially coming out on october 16th so keep an eye out for that and definitely read it when it does come out Okay, the final book I read for the massive readathon was Spin the Dawn. I buddy read it with some people on Discord and it was a really good book. I gave it four stars and this follows, it's a Mulan retelling, so some things are obvious. This follows a girl who is, she's her dad's only daughter and her dad is a tailor and so is she, but he is unable to make things anymore so she's been the one selling stuff and when the king comes asking for her dad to participate in the king's um competition to become the king's tailor um she offers but they refuse to let her because she's a woman and you can't have a female master tailor so she fakes being a man goes into the palace and pretends to be a master tailor so she could compete to be the king's personal tailor which is something she had always dreamed of i really love retellings and this was a really good one i was a little apprehensive with it being a mulan retelling because mulan is one of those books that may um one of those uh fairy tales that makes me a teeny bit angry a lot of them make me a teeny bit angry because of how women are treated this one especially so because women are clearly not seen as equal to men and i think because they're from like so far back in time all of them are to some extent but this one overly so so i was a little worried but i was quite impressed with how this book turned out um so spin the dawn is written by elizabeth, elizabeth lim and it's a duology and i am about to read the second book this month and by this month i mean in august and i'm super excited about it okay so that was it for the books I read for the Massive Readathon and I was done by the 19th of July so I was really wanting to read more before the end of the month so I decided to keep on going. The next book I read was Love Me Like You Mean It. It is a fake fiancé situationship and it's by Laura Burton. It's super quick but also I didn't like it that much. It was a two star for me. The next one was another kid's book. It was a Oh My, oh, I'm sorry, My Oh My, A Butterfly, All About Butterflies. Um, and it was by Tish Rabe. Did not read it. It was a kid's book, so I have nothing to say really about it. The next book I read was Lucy Yi is Not a Romantic. It's about this woman. It's by Lauren Ho. And it's about this woman uh, who is, who's decided that she's going to have a kid even though she doesn't have a partner. So she joins this like dating app for people finding partners to have children with. And she finds someone, they have kids, they decide to 
get pregnant and then move back to Singapore where they have to fake a relationship because her parents would not be okay with this situation and a lot of stuff ensues. I gave this a three star. I don't really know how I feel about this book per se. I thought the premise was really interesting, but certain things I was just like, I'm not sure how I feel. But overall, I did enjoy this book. I think the ending felt a little rushed, which I can't talk about without spoiling anything. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, and then I read my very first proper manga. Um, I did read one before, I just was very over it while I was reading it, but this one I really enjoyed. So I read Wutakoi, Love is Hard for an Otaku, and I read all of the volumes this month. So for volume one, I'm just gonna give you an overview of what that was. Um, so it's about this pe these people who work at the same office, and turns out they knew each other when they were in high school. And so these two decide, let's go out for drinks, and they decide to start dating each other after she complains about how her ex broke up with her after finding out she's an otaku which i think is someone who's like kind of like us who is obsessed with something like books or like mangas or um movies i don't know mangas animes and etc games etc he's a gamer she does like she designs mangas etc I'm saying a lot of etc because I'm not sure about a lot of this stuff because this is my first time entering the manga universe. <laughs> so anyway, I read that book, gave it a three stars. So each volume consisted of two Japanese volumes. So volume one, when I say it consisted of Japanese volume one and two, um, the next one I read was volume two, gave it a three star, volume three, gave it a three star, four and gave it a three star. The next one I read was not one of the Otakoi's, uh, Otakoi books. Um, I read The Accidental Pinup, which was about a photographer who does pinup photo shoots and she's trying to get this job on this campaign, her best friend's lingerie company, but turns out the people who are hiring don't really want her. They want this guy they've worked with before because why not hire the guy? Anyway, but when the person, uh, the designer, her best friend, decides that she might be best in front of the camera, she decides to give it a shot for her best friend and become a model just for this one time. And the guy who is in competition with her decide, is the photographer, but with the caveat that she's going to be the one planning the whole shoot. She's the one in charge. And it's just their story. And it's slightly enemies to lovers but they're not enemies for too long i gave this a three star it was a good book but it was just a little bit meh at the same time so the next book i read was the lion witch and the wardrobe i i had tried reading it before and i didn't read it before but i finally gave it a shot i love the narnia universe i absolutely love the movies but the books I don't, I'm not a fan of the writing style, but the story is beautiful. And if you don't know what Narnia is, what this book is about, it's about these four kids who go through a wardrobe into a magical universe called Narnia, and they have to deal with the witch there. I feel like the movie had more details than the book, and that never happens. There was more to the movie than the books. Book, because I've only read the first right now. Um, I gave it a three star because I love the story. But the book, I don't know how I feel about it, but the story was good. Um, the next book I read was the Wotakoi book 5, uh, volume 5, and then finally I finished it off with the volume 6. All of these got 3 stars. The next book I read, I was super excited about. It was The Atlas 6. It's about 6 magicians. Yeah, magicians is the best way to say it. Who get recruited to be part of the secret society and only five of them will be initiated and there is an elimination. They have different uh, specialties. There is the um, Libby and, what's his name? So there's Libby and Nico who are both phys physicists who have more like physical powers. They control stuff like black hole, etc. cetera. Um, there is Reina who is kind of like an energy source, also a physical magic person. There is Tristan, Callum, and Parisa, who are all like non-physical stuff because Callum is an empath. Um, 
Farisa is a telepath, and then Tristan is a um, like he can see illusions, so he can see magic being done. And I thought this book was fantastic. It's just really the dynamics are super interesting. Gave it four stars, and so Nico and Libby have been rivals forever. So they go into the situation because they are like they don't want one to have it if the other like you know if they, they want the competition between each other and they can't give it up they've just graduated and they were about to walk away from each other and this comes up and they just can't um there is an interesting dynamic between callum and tristan and interesting dynamic between parisa and tristan parisa and libby tristan and libby it's just a lot of intermingling the only one that felt a little separated from the group was um reyna so I'm excited to see how that goes in the next book. The next book comes out this year, so I am psyched for that. Um, and the last book I read in the month of July was She Persisted in Science. I thought it was a really good bookend move. First book, last book, the same series by Chelsea Clinton. Didn't read it again. It's just about remarkable women in science, which again, a feel good thing for me because I love reading about successful women. Anyway, so that is it for my July wrap up and my massive readers on 2021 wrap up the reason i ended up reading so many extra books this month is because next month is aurelium and i am only playing as one character technically for aurelium but i will also be reading um books for um those characters in my spare time just because so I was trying to fill out the prompts for these characters before August and I managed to do it. I have five characters total and I have not officially finished reading for all of their callings and I'm caught up with it. So after August, I'll start reading for them for the other stuff, but they're not characters I'm officially playing as for Aurelium, so they do not count during the month of August. With that being said, I am super excited for Aurelium and I will be doing a TBR video for that really, really soon. So I'll see you in that one. Bye-bye.